Japan's construction sector is vast and sophisticated, marked by advanced machinery and innovative approaches, which rely on various types of cranes, including crawler cranes, all-terrain cranes, and rough-terrain cranes. The Role of Cranes in Japan's Construction Industry Japan's construction industry plays a critical role in the nation's economy, comprising approximately 10% of its GDP and employing over 5 million people. Construction work in Japan ranges from high-rise buildings and complex civil engineering projects to disaster-resilient infrastructure, all of which require precise and adaptable crane operations. Crawler cranes. Power and stability on soft ground. Crawler cranes are vital for projects requiring heavy lifting on soft or uneven ground, particularly in areas where foundation stability is a concern. These cranes are built on caterpillar tracks, which give them high maneuverability and stability, even on softer, less stable surfaces. Japan's extensive coastline, mountainous regions, and areas prone to seismic activity make crawler cranes essential for many types of construction projects. With lifting capacities that range from 50 tons to over 2,000 tons, crawler cranes are ideal for large infrastructure projects, such as bridges, highways, and dams, that require heavy lifting on uneven surfaces. All-terrain cranes, versatile and efficient. All-terrain cranes in Japan serve as a versatile solution for both urban and rural construction sites. Designed to operate on various surfaces including paved roads and uneven, unpaved ground, these cranes can easily traverse the mix of conditions often found in Japanese construction zones. With lifting capacities that range from 30 to 1,200 tons, all-terrain cranes are used extensively in construction projects that require both speed and adaptability. Their relatively compact design allows them to access hard-to-reach locations, making them popular for building multi-story apartments, offices, and shopping centers in crowded urban districts. In Japan's rural regions, all-terrain cranes are often employed in projects that enhance connectivity and accessibility, such as road and railway expansions. Japan's commitment to infrastructure modernization and disaster-resilient construction continues to boost demand for these cranes, which offer the adaptability and power needed for various construction tasks. Rough terrain cranes, specialization for uneven ground. Rough terrain cranes are essential for projects on unmade and challenging ground surfaces where other types of cranes may struggle. In Japan's mountainous and rural areas where roads are often undeveloped, rough terrain cranes are the preferred choice for construction. Rough terrain cranes typically offer lifting capacities between 10 and 100 tons, making them suited for tasks like setting up temporary structures, building roads, and constructing power lines. Japan's emphasis on disaster preparedness and renewable energy
has also led to the increased use of rough terrain cranes in constructing wind farms, solar power installations, and other renewable energy facilities in remote areas. Their maneuverability and durability make them perfect for Japan's unpredictable terrain and climate, enabling construction crews to access remote locations with limited infrastructure. Operating cranes and heavy equipment requires precision, awareness, and strict adherence to safety protocols to prevent potentially catastrophic failures. Despite rigorous guidelines, various factors can lead to equipment failure and accidents. Below is an in-depth analysis of the primary causes of crane and heavy equipment failure, with specific numbers and statistical data where available. Human error. Human error accounts for up to 85% of all crane-related accidents, according to a 2017 study by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA. Mistakes made by operators are often due to inadequate training, poor communication, or distraction. Operator errors, such as lifting loads beyond the crane's capacity or improper setup, place excessive stress on equipment components. The result can be tipping, buckling, or complete equipment collapse. Moreover, fatigue and complacency play a significant role in errors. as prolonged shifts and repeated tasks can diminish attentiveness. The report by the National Safety Council NSC, suggests that fatigue contributes to around 13% of workplace incidents across various industries, a figure that is likely similar in heavy equipment operations. Mechanical failure and poor maintenance. Mechanical failures are responsible for around 15% of heavy equipment accidents. Cranes and heavy machinery have numerous moving parts, each susceptible to wear and tear, lack of regular maintenance, neglecting pre-operational checks, and deferred repairs can lead to component failures, such as broken cables, hydraulic leaks, or defective brakes, The American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME, recommends routine maintenance and inspection after every 150 hours of operation or three months, whichever comes first. Failure to adhere to these standards increases the likelihood of malfunction. Furthermore, poorly maintained electrical systems can lead to unexpected shutdowns or even fires, contributing to 3-4% to of equipment-related fatalities. Overloading and exceeding capacity limits. OSHA reports indicate that overloading is a factor in approximately 10% of crane accidents. Cranes and heavy equipment are designed with specific load capacities, which, if exceeded, compromise their structural integrity. Overloading can cause cables to snap, booms to buckle, or equipment to topple. Load charts and digital load monitoring systems are in place to prevent such issues, but a lack of awareness, misunderstanding of load charts, or intentional overloading to save time can still result in dangerous scenarios. For instance, construction sites with tight deadlines may sometimes push operators to load equipment beyond safe limits, significantly increasing the chance of catastrophic failure. Environmental and site conditions. Environmental factors contribute to roughly 15% of heavy equipment incidents. Weather conditions like high winds, rain, or ice can destabilize cranes and other equipment. 
Cranes are particularly vulnerable to wind. OSHA specifies that cranes should not be operated if winds exceed 20 miles per hour. Nonetheless, accidents still occur when these guidelines are disregarded or when wind conditions change suddenly during a lift. Soil stability and ground conditions also play a crucial role in equipment stability. In 2020, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, reported that unstable ground conditions accounted for around 8% of crane tip-over incidents. Inadequate training and lack of certification. Improperly trained operators account for a significant proportion of equipment-related accidents. OSHA requires crane operators in construction to be certified by an accredited organization. However, training standards can vary, and some operators may be inadequately trained. Failure to follow safety protocols. Failure to follow established safety protocols is a leading cause of heavy equipment accidents, estimated to contribute to around 25% of all incidents. Protocols like wearing personal protective equipment, PPE, conducting regular inspections, and adhering to lifting guidelines are critical for preventing accidents. Preparing the access road for trucks. To accommodate the delivery of such a massive crane, a suitable access road must be prepared. Given the weight and size of the crane parts, the road needs to be stable, wide, and capable of bearing heavy loads. Construction of this access route is essential to ensure that trucks transporting crane components can reach the assembly site safely. Arrival of the LG 1750 in Haldenstein. Once the access road is ready, the parts of the LG 1750 crane start arriving in Haldenstein, a critical stage in the assembly process. Receiving parts in Oldas. Upon arrival in Oldas, the parts are carefully unloaded and staged for assembly. The crane's assembly requires substantial open space to accommodate the long boom sections and counterweights. Assembling the LG-1750, with all parts in place, the assembly of the LG-1750 begins. The crane's unique design leverages the turntable and boom system from the LR-1750 crawler crane but integrates these with an 8-axle mobile chassis. Hydraulic systems and specialized tools are used to secure each section of the lattice boom, ensuring stability and alignment. Raising the LG-1750. After the lattice boom is fully assembled, the crane's counterweight system is set up to ensure stability during lifting operations. The counterweights are attached to the crane's rear and side sections to balance the weight of the extended boom. The LG-1750's modular counterweight design allows flexibility, letting operators adjust the configuration depending on the required load and radius. Using powerful hydraulic systems, the LG-1750 is gradually lifted to its full height. Given its maximum hoist height of 193 meters, raising the crane is a careful process that requires experienced operators. 
The crane's eight-axle chassis, combined with a sophisticated rear-axle steering system, allows for precision positioning during the raising process. The LG 1750 Lattice Boom Mobile Crane combines the advantages of a crawler crane with the mobility of a high-speed mobile crane. It can achieve a lifting radius of up to 136 meters, making it suitable for large-scale operations. This flexibility makes it particularly useful in wind power installations, where it can handle the significant height and weight requirements of turbine components. Applications of the LG 1750 The LG 1750's versatility and power make it ideal for a range of applications, including wind power construction. The crane's height and lifting capacity allow it to erect wind turbine towers and install heavy turbine components. Industrial Construction the LG 1750 is well suited for heavy lifting in industrial projects, such as installing large machinery or steel structures. Infrastructure projects. From bridges to other massive structures, the crane can be utilized in infrastructure projects that require lifting large components to considerable heights. In Jank, Belgium, Max Strands transported an impressive 400 ton. Seventy-four meter long and eight point four meter wide tank. Using Feynmanville Modul Max S modules. These versatile transport modules allow for high-capacity hauling, supporting payloads of up to 5,000 tons. The Modul Max S modules are renowned for their combinability, enabling them to handle oversized heavy loads like this massive tank. The 270-ton long-reach excavator, one of the largest of its kind in New Zealand, is an impressive machine designed for specialized heavy-duty tasks in construction. This excavator features a remarkable 42-meter, three-part boom that extends its reach far beyond that of standard excavators. This extensive reach enables it to efficiently shape batter slopes, place armor rock, and work on large-scale projects like reclamations and seawalls. The machine's design allows for precise manipulation of heavy materials, which is essential in coastal and reclamation environments where stability and resilience against natural forces are crucial. New Zealand-based company Heron Construction operates this machine, utilizing it to protect and reinforce land areas exposed to erosion or flooding. The boom's steel components were produced by Real Steel, Known for their expertise in creating durable parts for extreme conditions, Heron Construction then took on the fabrication and assembly, ensuring the equipment meets the rigorous demands of marine and coastal construction. The Pranath Panther T14R rotating dumper is a robust crawler carrier, designed to handle the toughest tasks in challenging terrains, such as the quick clay landslide at Sorum.
The Panther T14R operates with a 205 kilowatts engine at 2200 revolutions per minute, generating significant power to carry up to 13200 kilograms of material in a single trip. Its heaped capacity of 6.5 cubic meters allows it to transport substantial volumes, enabling efficient handling and transportation of landslide debris and other heavy materials. One of the standout features of the T14R is its rotating tipper box, which can rotate a full 360 degrees, allowing operators to dump loads in any direction without needing to reposition the entire vehicle. This feature is particularly useful on unstable or narrow paths, as it enables precise placement of materials even in restricted areas. In addition to its advanced dumping mechanism, the Panther T14R boasts a travel speed of 13.5 km per hour and an impressive ground pressure of only 26.9 kPa when unloaded. This low ground pressure minimizes environmental impact and reduces the risk of the machine getting bogged down in soft soils or clay-heavy areas. To further enhance operator safety and comfort, the Panther T14R includes ROPS, rollover protective structure, and air conditioning in the cab, along with an inclinometer built into the display. This inclinometer provides real-time angle data and adjustable alarms, alerting operators when the vehicle approaches unsafe inclines. In what's been heralded as one of the most ambitious and demanding transportation projects in U.S. history, Perkins Specialized Transportation moved four massive retired generators, each weighing 800,000 pounds, from Southern California to Clive, Utah. This endeavor was no ordinary haul, each generator standing 15 feet 5 inches in both height and width and stretching 43 feet in length, had to be transported individually due to its sheer weight and size, this journey covered a distance of 850 miles across three states and countless counties, and Perkins took three years to meticulously plan and coordinate every detail of the logistics. Moving these colossal generators required an extreme level of engineering, power, and endurance. To accomplish this task, Perkins designed a specialized trailer that could support and maneuver the extraordinary 400-ton weight of each load. The trailer measured close to 300 feet long and nearly 20 feet high, and was equipped with 192 wheels. This design enabled it to manage the immense cargo and make sharp turns, especially in complex intersections. The transport trailer, divided into four independently operated dollies, allowed individual adjustments for negotiating turns and avoiding obstacles, such as traffic signals and power poles, with precise control. Each intersection along the route was thoroughly surveyed multiple times to ensure there would be no unexpected obstructions. Max Titan trucks, known for their remarkable durability and power, were chosen for both their impressive 16-liter MP10 engines that churn out over 600 horsepower and 2,000 foot-pounds of torque, and their capability to handle the demands of the road.
multiple Titan trucks were employed in a combination of pulling and pushing roles, creating a road train weighing approximately 1.5 million pounds. This setup, with multiple trucks working in unison, required both power and precision to ensure a steady, coordinated pull across the varying terrains encountered along the 850-mile stretch. Travel speeds on this journey were necessarily slow, averaging about 25 miles per hour. To minimize traffic disruptions, nighttime travel was arranged for the California leg, with the convoy lighting up the dark roads as they moved, step by painstaking step. Nevada presented a different challenge with daytime travel permitted through its expansive, less populated regions. Despite the open roads, Nevada's rugged terrain brought steep grades, a true test for the Mack Titans. Here, Max Allison 4700 RDS automatic transmission was invaluable, allowing constant power and seamless synchronization across all trucks. Here, three Mercedes-Benz trucks were linked together to transport an extraordinary load, a massive 80-meter-long, 90-ton steel pipe pile. The project's unique demands required a powerful vehicle configuration to move this massive load across varying terrains. Mercedes-Benz's 3353 model, with its robust Actros line of heavy-duty trucks, offers the needed strength, reliability, and advanced engineering to handle such extreme payloads. This specific setup in Fukuoka demonstrated not just the power of the 3353 model, but also its adaptability in specialized applications. One of the defining features of the 3,353 Actros is its own 473 engine, a 15.6-liter powerhouse known for its fuel efficiency and high torque output. This is crucial for maintaining stability and safety when dealing with loads as demanding as the Fukuoka steel pipe pile. The engine's torque capabilities are complemented by the Actros's advanced suspension and braking systems, both of which played an essential role in managing the weight and length of the load on both straight and curved paths. The transport of steel pipe piles for projects like Fukuoka's infrastructure expansion reflects the increasing need for reliable heavy-duty solutions in complex logistical challenges. Mercedes-Benz's Actros 3353, particularly when deployed in a multi-vehicle configuration, offers an ideal solution. It not only meets the demands of modern construction and infrastructure projects, but also aligns with industry trends favoring precision, safety, and efficiency in heavy transport. In Blijsveek, Netherlands, the final stage of a remarkable transport mission recently took place, involving the careful movement of three large transformers manufactured by Smit in Nijmegen. The crossing of Highway A12 and the train track posed a particular logistical challenge due to the elevation difference between them. The train track lies significantly higher than the highway, and to bridge this height difference, specialized preparation and unique transport solutions were implemented. To enable the transport vehicles to cross the train track, workers pre-installed large steel piles into the ground alongside the track. These piles served as permanent supports, and substantial steel plates were laid across them to create a temporary bridge for the transformers to pass. The idea of building a traditional ramp from the highway up to the train track bridge was considered but quickly dismissed. Constructing such a ramp would have necessitated the closure of the highway for several hours, 
which would have severely disrupted traffic. Instead, the team devised a clever alternative by employing a two-layered vehicle setup using self-propelled modular transporters, SPMTs, a modular, highly maneuverable vehicle designed for transporting oversized loads. Here, two SPMTs were stacked on top of each other, creating a makeshift platform to effectively bridge the elevation difference without extensive road closures. This configuration allowed the transport team to achieve the necessary height for crossing directly from the highway onto the train track bridge. For each transformer, the highway was closed briefly, allowing the first SPMT layer to transport the transformer across. Once the transformer had cleared the highway, it was reopened to traffic, with only the right lane remaining closed. This process was repeated for each transformer in succession. The third and final transformer was transported at dawn, as daylight was essential for aerial photography documentation. A hired plane was on standby to capture images of the impressive maneuver from above, making it a memorable finale to the project. The entire operation, from the preparation of the track crossing to the coordinated highway closures and smooth execution, demonstrated meticulous planning and innovative engineering, ensuring the safe and efficient transport of these valuable transformers. Transporting an immense 53-meter-long, 528-ton cargo across challenging routes is no small feat, particularly when the load rests on a precisely engineered, 24-axle trailer system. The large-scale transportation operation begins with detailed route analysis and planning. Engineers and logistics coordinators work in concert to develop a plan that not only optimizes the route, but also minimizes risk, ensuring structural integrity at every point. The 24-axle system is designed to distribute the 528-ton weight evenly across a larger surface area, reducing the risk of road damage and improving stability during transport. These multi-axle platforms also feature hydraulic steering mechanisms that can adapt to tight turns and uneven terrain, allowing the load to move safely through otherwise impassable areas. Heavy transports of this scale are common in industries like power generation, construction and aerospace, where moving colossal components is essential to the operation's success. This specific case exemplifies the capabilities required to tackle complex logistical challenges Salvaging a wooden boat in a harbor requires a careful, step-by-step -step approach to ensure safety, environmental protection, and efficient material recovery. It's essential to evaluate each component's condition to determine if it's reusable, repairable, or better suited for recycling. Consider using cranes or winches for heavy sections to minimize manual lifting. If the boat is partially submerged, using flotation devices or pumps can help stabilize it for easier disassembly. It's also wise to cordon off the work area to prevent unauthorized entry and protect bystanders, as removing boat components can involve heavy lifting and sharp tools. If power tools are required, ensure that all equipment is tested and functioning correctly to avoid accidents.
once safety measures are in place, begin dismantling the boat, starting with loose or accessible components like deck fittings, ropes, and metal fixtures. Carefully remove larger structures, such as planks or beams, using appropriate tools to avoid splintering or cracking, especially if the wood is aged or weathered. This inspection phase is crucial for planning an organized salvage operation, minimizing unnecessary labor, and preserving as much of the original material as possible. Anyone involved should wear protective gear, including gloves, goggles, hard hats, and steel-toed boots, to prevent injury. Finally, prioritize environmental protection throughout the process. Prevent any debris or hazardous material, like oil or paint, from entering the water by setting up containment barriers or using absorbent pads. Properly dispose of non-reusable materials in designated recycling or disposal facilities. Salvaging a wooden boat in a harbor can be labor-intensive, but with a structured approach, the process can yield valuable materials while ensuring safety and environmental care.